Hello everyone, my name is Kathleen Toma from the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. I'd like to thank the organizers for the invite. I'll be discussing subintimal plaque modification for CTO PCI. So we're talking about subintimal tracking and re-entry or STAR and subintimal plaque modification or SPAM in the context of an investment procedure. Um, what does this look like? Well, you're in a complex CTO case, you spend a lot of time in the subintimal space you're reaching contrast and radiation limits, We're simply running out of options um, and getting in this failure mode. One way out of this is to perform subintimal tracking and reentry, whereby a polymer ejected guide wire is knuckled in the subintimal space and advanced until it's spontaneously entered into the true lumen, which usually occurs at the distal segment uh, in a branching point. When this technique was originally described, um, the success rates were pretty high. However, immediate stenting after this resulted in poor patency of the vessel at follow-up, primarily due to the fact that the outflow is very poor uh, and you shear out a lot of uh, side branches with this extensive dissection. So instead of doing that, we now evolved to just ballooning the subintimal space and the re-entry point in a technique known as subintimal plaque modification with the concept of uh, establishing some flow and bring the patient later for a stage relook and potential stenting. What does this look like? This is a case of a um, circumflex CTO, relatively short, single OM outflow, no interventional collaterals, the vessel is relatively small. After spending some time trying to wire this, ended up in the subintimal space. Stop, the stingray was uh, not successful, so the decision was made to proceed with STAR. You can see here the knuckle is advanced in the OM and it re-enters the true lumen in the mid portion of the OM as evidenced by the abrupt change in the caliber of the knuckle. Following that, the vessel is dilated um, and there is distal flow. However, note that there is uh, absence of a lot of side branches here. So stenting at this point is perhaps not advised and what the decision was um, eventually was to bring the patient back Two months later, this is what the vessel looks like now. As you can appreciate, the dissection planes are somewhat healed now. You can see a lot of side branches. The vessel uh, was stented with a um, good final result at the end. And again, as you can appreciate here, the difference between immediately post-spam and two months later, um, the um, recruitment of side branches at follow-up. So how does uh, subintimal plaque modification work? Um, by fracturing the plaque, you establish these connections between the uh, dissection plane and the true lumen, and this can lead to improved distal flow, sometimes to the extent that no additional intervention is needed at follow-up. Uh, it can facilitate re-intervention. You already created a space that can be wired. You can even achieve true lumen re-entry at an earlier point, and potentially shorter stenting at follow-up, again, because um, you may be able to re-enter in the true lumen upstream from the uh, knuckle re-entry and stand shorter. What is the data behind it? Uh, this is the Italian experience published in 2015, the original paper describing this technique. They compare their uh, stenting immediately following STAR with a deferred stenting strategy. In both these groups, there's extensive dissection of the subintimal space. When the patients were brought back uh, later, about 80% of them still had a patent vessel. Um, the uh, patency was predicted by um, good flow in the um, true lumen at the time of the original procedure. The patients ended up with shorter stent lengths when the first stenting strategy was um, applied. The uh, target lesion revascularization rates were the same. Uh, the uh, Stent thrombosis um, occur more frequently in the elective stenting uh, strategy, although again, this is a retrospective, very small study. Looking at the uh, experience in the uh, larger PROGRESS CTO uh, registry, as you can see from 2015, following the publication of that paper, there's increased adoption of this strategy of um, investment procedure with STAR and uh, subintimal plaque modification. This led to um, an increased rate of reattempted procedures. These are complex CTOs with high JCTO scores. The success rates at follow-up are very high at 83%. Uh, 
with minimal complications in hostile maze of 3.3%. To the extent that this um, approach has become now a part of the um, new version of the hybrid algorithm for CTO-PCI, where you spend time trying to follow the um, uh, hybrid approach and, and opening the vessel, but if you reach, uh, once you reach a radiation limit, contrast volume limits, the procedure is taking too long, there's operator fatigue, or simply you're running out of options. Uh, if STAR is feasible, you perform STAR and SPM, you stop and you bring the patient back um, two months later, two to three months later for a repeat attempt. So here is another case of a gentleman with symptoms um, in a RCA CTO flanked by severe disease of both hands. There are some very faint collaterals from the left system, no visible collaterals. So we decided to go ahead with a um, anti-grade wire escalation dissection re-entry type of approach. It looks like there's a reasonable landing zone distally. We had a very hard time going to the mid part of the lesion. Eventually, we were able to push a knuckle distally, convert to um, a dissection reentry with a stingray. However, due to the extensive dissection and probably the hematoma, we were unable to um, achieve true lumen reentry with a stingray. At this point, we used a lot of contrast and radiation, and rather than uh, trying an anti -grade, a retrograde approach, we uh, decided to go ahead and perform STAR. Uh, we were able to get a knuckle into the uh, posterior lateral branch, then dilated the whole vessel from there all the way back. Um, however, despite all that, we had relatively poor flow at the end. Note that there is um, true lumen um, at, the, um, at the very distal end, uh, but the flow is poor. We only have one vessel runoff. So rather than stenting this, uh, we elected to stop here and brought the patient back two months later. And perhaps not surprising, now the vessel is completely occluded, uh, which dictated our next approach. Uh, we decided to go anti-grade uh, right off the bat. Um, and after surfing several septals, we were able to find a connection, advance the microcatheter of distal RCA. And the important point of this case is that um, from there on, it was very easy to advance the wire and the microcatheter to the CTO segment, which was already prepped by the original procedure. We were able to uh, take the uh, microcatheter all the way back to the ostium, externalize the wire, and stent this vessel with very um, reasonable results. And as you can see, we have much better outflow at the end with um, inclu including a, to a PDA and uh, the PLB. So some of the problems that one can encounter with this approach, uh, vessel perforation is very rare. Usually these knuckles tend to stay in the vessel architecture. But the more common issue is that sometimes you fail to enter with a star, and that's usually due to the fact that the knuckle is very large and probably sits somewhere in the uh, vessel architecture towards the adventitia rather than towards the subintimal space. So you want to keep that knuckle relatively small. Some take-home points. Um, star and SPM are certainly very useful investment procedures uh, when reaching um, uh, your limits in the case, either contrast radiation or simply uh, you don't have any other options that you can try. It's important to adequately balloon the vessel and dilate, um, dilate the reentry point as well. The reattempt success rates are high with potentially shorter stent lengths and improve outflow. And the best wait time between the index procedure and the reattempt seems to be somewhere around two to four months. And with that, I thank you for your attention.